Hi everybody, this is Chris. This is Matt. And today we're going to be talking about Strike Commander. Um, if it's your first time joining us, each month we pick a game, we play it, and we do a discussion sort of on what we thought of it. It's Don't take it as a review, it is literally just two guys played a game for a month, and this is what we thought. We might not even always talk about the game. We might veer off into other things. I got a feeling we're going to talk about 486s before the day is over today. Uh, yeah, and and another thing, uh, we don't always play the game a whole lot. I just want to be really clear about that because I didn't really play the game a whole lot this month. Right. Well, it is it. This is meant very much as a book club sort of format, and if the book sucks, the book sucks. Yep. So we were kind of talking just briefly beforehand. Worst game, Strike Commander, or Auto Duel. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think auto duel was a worse game correct than answer. strike commander. Absolutely correct. Just answer. from like, so we both, we both had a bad time with strike commander this month, which was extra heartbreaking to me. Cause I was so, so looking forward to it. Uh, but man, this, this son of a bitch just did not hold up. And I don't think, I think the difference is that. Auto Duel was fundamentally flawed from a gameplay, pacing, blah 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 perspective, whereas Strike Commander just didn't hold up. It, it, I think if if I went back and played this, you know, my thirteen year old self played this, I would have a ton of fun with it. Uh, but thirty eight year old Matt didn't have fun with it, and I think here's one large, of the things. I think's interesting. I've played this game all the way through. I've bought the expansion pack and I played until I had to go up against A10s. And I realized that my problem was I put so many bullets into A10s and could not take them. They were just damage sponges. Mm -hmm. Um which is awesome, but like so I have played this game all the way through once. Started playing it again. It's I don't think it modernized well. Right. And we're both like great lovers of emulation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is one of the times where the game, it this game came out in 1993. Yep. So it's relatively modern compared to a lot of the other stuff that we em play mm -hmm. on emulators. And I think the problem is largely just that it doesn't, it's, it's new enough that it doesn't mesh well with with emulation. Correct. Like uh, you run into problems where, when you have the game at certain speeds, it's not that the fighters are moving faster or your game's moving faster; it's that the AI is moving faster. And the second you launch a missile, it's got chaff up. Um, yep. So my experience with this was that I started playing it. I played, I went through a bunch of rigmarole to make my joystick work the way I wanted it to, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about that too. Yeah. And I started to do the first mission and I couldn't beat it. I tried and tried and tried. Uh, I ran out of ammo every time because the second I would fire a missile, they would chaff or flare it or mm -hmm. probably chaff early game. Uh, and I just couldn't shoot the dudes down. Like eventually I could get one maybe, but then, then you are in the gun game, mm -hmm. which is miserable. Shooting dudes down with the gun in this game is horrible. It's really hard. Uh, and the, the resolution is not so good. Like it's VGA. Yeah. It, it, it's one of the better VGA games, but in a fast paced action game where you're, you're trying to shoot a dude that's relatively far away from you with a gun with tracer bullets. It's just next to impossible. And well, you run out of ammo so fast. And this is one of the things where I think the size of our screens and the proportions and everything is part of what damaged this game in terms of modernizing it. We're playing the good old game version here. Uh, this is one of the first games from good old games where um, I can't recommend this version of it. Mm-hmm. Because again, I played through it as a kid. 
I did it. I used guns. I used missiles. I used all of it. This game is not the same. Um, and part of it is like when you, you are so close in and you can see the pixels of the plane that are basically Lego size on the screen where your bullet, where your, where your target is, is not, even if it's on a pixel, that's not necessarily where the plane is. And then on top of it, it has some serious jumping issues in terms of you'll see things jump half an inch, a quarter inch in a frame. Mm -hmm. And so really that gritty dog fighting feeling is lost completely in, in, in trying to play this version. Now I do want to say a couple things to kind of redeem the game a little bit, but it's not really redeeming the game. We found, uh, there's, there's some sites out there. If you look up enough places, you can find some tips to make the game more playable. Yes. Emphasis you... on more playable. It's still. My experience with that was that you, you found a good tweet guide and sent it to me because you, you got kind of like hung up on making this game fun. I, yeah. I think. And I sat down after you sent that uh, to do it. And I was just like, I don't want to put this much work into making this game fun because even if you do all that work, it's still like kind of mediocre. Uh, like the controls aren't smooth. Like I said, the the resolution's so bad. And like I did play it windowed for mm. for a while, and that that helped a little bit uh, with the with the graphics. But still, like it just it wasn't worth the effort to me. The resolution and stuff like that, yeah, it's not smooth. You, I feel like you cannot play with a joystick, and I should talk about that. Um, you can't play with a joystick because it is so jerky and it's so hopping all over the place that the you don't get the nuance you would get out of an analog joystick ends up being a detriment because you're trying to move at a gradual rate, but the game is... Uh, at its speed jumping places so you can't keep up with it and fine-tuning that speed is almost impossible so i switched to keyboard and keyboard let me do better in the dog fights sort of but it also meant that there were certain maneuvers that were just off limits to me it was nearly impossible to red out or black out when pulling high g turns because you could never pull a turn hard enough on the digital keyboard that mm -hmm. you could on uh, with a joystick and that's unfortunate the my joystick didn't work out of the box like it did with tie fighter now to be fair this is six years before tie fighter but it supposedly works with logitech you know with Thrustmasters. Mm -hmm. oh right here let's let's let me stop yeah. a second let me beep let me just these posters are fantastic the posters are fantastic but it is, I got to cover this part too. This game is an early 90s thing. I'm going to just start calling this sort of situation the trouble with the poo because it's another case of that in this game. Not as bad as Jagged Lance, but like if you watch, if you look at what it says when you hover over the posters, your um, poster, that's Gaze It poster. Like the posters are fantastic though. I thoroughly enjoyed the funniness of just. Yeah, I want to bet that guy's one is one of the developers. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Bolted on something. I it's. I don't know if it's Chris Roberts or not, but <laughs> I love it. Um, I like these cutscenes. I did too. I liked the menus. I liked the cutscenes. Uh, the manuals were super intricate. I didn't read all of it, but it's. Like no a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you told us last time you weren't going to read manuals. So. Yeah. Uh, I started to, and I was like, this is way more than I signed up for. Right. So, like, uh, I, th I found That's the manual. That's fucking Origin, though, man. What's that? That's Origin, though. We're going to build an entire world, and we're going to pack it in every part of your gaming experience, from the manual through the game. It's all going to be a world. I think the manual was better at setting tone than it was as a piece of story 
Like, because you get... Agreed. That's that's what it's really good at. Like, there's ads for all the missile manufacturers in there, and there's, like... Mm-hmm. It, it's like a, a magazine for uh, yeah uh, mercenary jet fighters. It's, it, it's cool. I don't have my box in front of me because I got it in my stash, but... Like, what'd you say? Like the first three quarters of it is fluff. And then it finally gets to some game information. Yeah. And the problem with that is, uh, there's a lot of game information. Like I was trying to figure out, it was one of the, the heads up displays that pop up at the bottom of mm-hmm. your thing. I think it was the gun targeting. Yeah. View, yeah. Cause fuck that thing. Uh, but it tells you, like, you can pull it up, but it doesn't tell you the key to do it. So then you have to go to the reference card to find the key. That was a little right. irritating. Like, you, you, you spent all this time writing this, like, 80-page manual or whatever, and you can't even tell me which key it is. Like, well, I have to go to another resource. And I'd forgive that if I could remap the keys in the game, because that would mean you don't know the key I'm using. But you do. You do know the key I'm using, because I can't remap the keys. Right. And it can't remap my flight buttons. And so that was part of my problem with trying to use joysticks is I can't, the buttons don't do what I necessarily think they should do. And I wanted to fix that. My throttle didn't work at all um, and was supposed to. Like you can select that in the options. Um, And we'll eventually get to the actual gameplay here. There's a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Chris Roberts definitely wants more than games yeah and in every one of his games you can see that uh i'm looking forward to us trying wing Commander because i want to know if it's as bad as this situation was i'm definitely going to start with the tweaks when we get to that game yeah definitely uh, rather than start out with a bad taste in my mouth um yeah, I wouldn't mind playing that Wing Commander with Mark Hamill. I played the shit out of that thing oh, when it came yeah. to three. You remember that? Three, yeah, four, Wing Commander and three. Five, yeah. They were, that was some good stuff. Yeah, I liked good. I liked those games. Yeah. We'll get around to them. I, I know yeah. that. Um anyway, back to the problem with the poo and some of these cutscenes, like everybody you talk to is a stereotype. Mm-hmm. Um the the one where I finally like there was an Arab guy at the beginning that was like a little cringy but not too bad. It was the Generalissimo talking about banditos with his one gold tooth, and I'm like, mm-hmm. <sighs> early '90s. I I actually think we should like look into what was going on in the early mid '90s because uh, I, every time I go back to that era, I'm startled. Because I felt like it was far more progressive than apparently it was. Like, I've got these rose-tinted glasses on for that era. Um, But, anyway. It didn't detract from me playing this game. Because, oh, you cannot get to the settings until you're actually here. Right, yeah. Yeah, that was... And it's irritating to get... It's all O to open this thing. And, like, who would think of that? Yeah, yeah. But man, look at this. Look at that. Uh, the the thing that's so interesting about this game is like it graphically, it was pretty revolutionary. But it just like the terrain is so shitty. Well, you look at this and you think, oh, man, that's really bad polygons. But that's amazing sprites is actually what I think we're looking at. We're not looking at we're looking at sprite rotation. Um, and this is where when I was like first trying to steer. I was looking around the cockpit rather than steering the plane. It took yeah. me a while to get this working. Um, that was a revolutionary feature too, being able to look around your cockpit and, yeah. and look at uh, the the incoming fighters and everything. Yeah, that was really cool. But yeah, they, when they made this, it had like uh, new c- shading technologies and all kinds mm-hmm. of like this was like the right before svga kind of became right a thing and they could get 1024 by 768 or whatever it is yeah uh so this is like i want to say this is probably as good as it gets for vga like i can't think of yeah many vga games that are better i want to pause for a second uh it's probably really hard to see if you're like watching on a phone or something like that but these numbers are rough to read you can't read shit in this game 
No. The, and I, you can't see anything. You can't read anything. I used to. And that's one of the things I know for sure is when I used to play this game, I could read those numbers. Now I look at them. And I mean, I can read them, I guess. But sure. Only because I know what they're supposed to be. But like, okay. So in the, you got your HUD. In the lower right, there is a D. I'm presuming that's an eight. Mm-hmm. Eight four point four. I I might be wrong. Well, I know it's an eight now because I can see fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen at the bottom. Right. Um. So. Yeah, but it's all super rough, and your uh. Your attitude, lines. You can lose those if you steer too far. They'll like leave your screen and you won't mm-hmm. get them back. And I had situations where I stalled out going upwards, but yeah, just and the plane just locked. Like I couldn't turn. I couldn't. I had no control. I had that happen too, quite a bit. And like couldn't change the throttle. Just the the. It's like the game locked up more than the plane. Um, right yeah that was very frustrating because i don't think that should ever happen like it's you know i don't know if that's a bug or or what but yeah it was really irritating but the the in-game like this cockpit is really feature rich and complex and Mm -hmm. like it, it would have been cool if if you could if the controls weren't so bad if if it if it were possible yeah uh you well, got your flaps on there. One you go. of the things I'm not doing, yeah, I'm I'm trying to pull those high G turns, and even with flaps and brakes, I'm not doing it. Um, because I haven't learned yet either, like to do the F1 zoom in. Like I still don't know all the controls here. Yeah, there's um, a lot of controls to learn for this. Yeah, and I I spend actually quite a bit of time learning them all and trying them all just because. I think we both wanted this to be more fun than it wound up being. Yes. Uh, and I th- I keep going back to, I I think why I wanted this game to be fun and why I worked so hard on it is, I can see the game in here. Yeah. I can see, I can see it. I can't get to it. And that's yep. really frustrating. Um, what did it for me? Uh the moment that I was like, "You're done." Fuck this game. I'm I'm done. And like, when it came time to tweak it out and try it again, that I didn't want to do it was because there's there's training missions that you can do. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to do training missions to just shoot some like 747s, and it was so hard. Like I was just trying to shoot them with the gun. Yeah. And I and I couldn't do it because it, and I I was. It, it, I was unwilling to not use the joystick for this because I have serious hardware nostalgia as well as video mm-hmm. game nostalgia. Like I want to play joystick games and yeah, you know, I, I want my it. old flight yoke back that I had when I was a kid that I, you know, uh, well, and like this game had stuff for pedals, man. I was like, man, right. rudder I should... pedals. I had all that shit. I loved Sims when I was a kid. Yeah. And I and feel I... like they're not, they're not, yeah, they don't feel approachable to me anymore. Well, like, there's none of this sort of half arcadey, half f- realistic flight sim. I mean, do you know of one? Do you know? Not really. A, uh, I mean, you got Elite, and you, in theory, have Star Citizen, and you want to spend twenty five grand on ships. Um, but is there something else? If someone knows of something else, let us know. I'd love to bust out my Thrustmaster here and shoot yeah. down some, you know. Right, get on that highway to the danger zone that right. we all wanted to be on in <laughs> the early 90s, you know? Yeah. Oh, there you go. You're blacking out. Good job. Yeah, I got it. You did it. I did it. That was revolutionary, redding out and blacking out. I learned, like I said, I was really interested in Sims, and I learned quite a bit about yeah jets from playing this game because all the jet types are real like it's it's Mm. got so much potential but it's just not very it's just not playable and it's so disappointing it is um yeah no it's 
Yeah. The, the, the music kind of drove me crazy too. And that was another thing that was in that tweet guy that you can fix. Right. But if, man, the moment I started this up and I heard that shitty ass horn in the, in the menu screen, I was like, what did we do? Like we should have played red Baron. We yeah. Shouldn't have, we shouldn't have played this. This was a mistake. And it just went downhill from there. I think stunt Island was the one we were looking at. And yeah, then we decided stunt to Island. Play this. Um, I'm even scared to play Stun Island now because I loved that shit. I have a feeling that since that one's older, it'll actually be better. I think you're right. Sense. I think if you, I think if I went back and played this on a 486 with with a 13 inch monitor, mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably have more fun. Yep. Yep. No. This is the game that, like, I've always been kind of like, oh, I should maybe build a 486 sometime. That'd be kind of fun to do. This is the game that made me want to do it. Mm -hmm. This is the game where I'm like, I want to, I need to check. I need to sometimes see if the original hardware makes a difference because I and my soul believe this one makes a difference. Yeah, I, I did play this, like, I wanted this game so desperately and then I was finally able to play it. So I played it eventually as a kid. Mm -hmm. it, it was even a little old when I started playing it, but it was still, you yeah. know, 486, you know, yeah. or I think it was on a P90 probably. Yeah, uh, probably early Pentium. Yeah. So, you know, not like cutting edge, but, mm -hmm. you know, but, and I had fun with it. Like, and I definitely got past the first fucking mission. Oh yeah. Like I said, I'm I finished so it. so salty about that. Yeah. I'm almost out of bullets here, and I used to be really good in a gunfight. Like that—that that bothers me. What if this is just two dudes in denial about how old they've gotten? What if that's really what this is? If it's you ever fight? think about that? Two two dudes in denial about how old they've gotten. <laughs> like, what if we're just shitty at games now? Like we were, and we were really great back then. No, I. No, it's the games. It's, it's, it's Fuck the games. that. It's got to be the games. Um, we're great. We're the best. No. 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 Because, <laughs> like, okay, we may be shitty at games. Or, or worse at games, I should say. But we are not... Um, can't get past the first mission bad at games. That's true. That's true. And you, you did... Like, I finally did beat the first mission. Mm -hmm. And then I was like... I, I'm going to land this thing because I, it's a sim and I want to land the plane. Fuck I did that. the same thing. Auto <laughs> land. Auto you're, land every time. You're lucky Auto you shot time. those dudes. Yeah. Or like do a bunch of training missions and learn how to do it right. Uh, yeah. Because I tried to pilot wings my dude in there and just like hope for the best. Do you remember pilot wings? I for do. the Pilot wings is Super good. Nintendo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you can't really do that because you got to you got to do it right. You got it. Yeah. There's enough simulation in this that it's unfaving if it you're not nailing that. Um, the game I used to love in this genre was one of them. yeah <laughs> yeah look at you. Uh, I used to love the game Jet Fighter Two, and it was before this. It was super polygonal, but it had like the glide slope and everything. You yeah, had to like line it up. That was a great game. Uh, Mine was yeah. Falcon Three O on the Mac. Oh yeah, Falcon 3.0. I had uh, I got into that in college. I had a friend who was an ROTC, and we would just sit and play that to death. And he taught me so much about combat maneuvers and how to handle a plane in an actual dogfight. And I got really good at that game. That game cool. is actually one of my old standards for how to do a sandbox game because it was like. You had tanks coming at you, and so you needed to take them out. And then the factory would start making more tanks, but only after the train got there. So if you took out like a bridge or something else, and then they'd launch enemy fighters to kind of help. So if you took out their uh, landing strip, the fighters couldn't launch. There was a series of things you could do in sort of any order you wanted to affect the battlefield and stop things from coming at your base while you went and tried to take out their base. And I loved that. I absolutely, like, there's nothing really that stopped you from loading up a bomb and trying to go hit their main base other than all the SAM sites and the enemy things. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's nothing that stopped you from making a go of it other than it was hard. 
and you right. needed to do things to move that way. I loved that. We will play yeah. that sometime. But... Yeah, this is turning into games we should have played instead of Strike Commander. <laughs> games we should have played when we need was... to own a 486. Yeah. Um, but the first game I I really loved was was the Red Baron because I love World War One airplanes. I thought that was the coolest shit ever. My problem with Red Baron, and I'm going to mention it sort of similar thing with here, was at the time I could not fly a mission even if I didn't get in a dogfight without running out of fuel. It took me a long time to try and figure that out until I eventually just turned on unlimited fuel because mm. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I'm sure if I went back now, I'd be better at it. Um, but who knows? You know, who knows? Maybe, maybe we're just maybe, bad at games. <laughs> maybe we couldn't get off the runway if we went back to it now. Well, that is one of the things. Like when I do go back to a lot of games, especially thinking games for sure. Action games, maybe not. I'll need to think about that more. But um, I do better than I did. Mm -hmm. you Me know? too. So I don't. I don't think it's two guys who don't know how to play games. I think this game is fundamentally just. I think it's not portable. It's not portable. It it needs a rewrite. Mm -hmm. You and can't people... emulate this. It needs a rewrite. Yeah, there's some dude trying to redo this for the Oculus Rift, which <laughs> more power to you, buddy. But yeah, it has a reputation for having a terrible code base, doesn't it? Oh yes, it does. Oh yeah, uh, let me find that. Um, so an Ultima Eight. There's a quote section. If you watch all the credits and in, in Ultima Seven and Ultima Eight. I don't know about Ultima 9 off the top of my head. I don't remember. Try to block as much of that game out as I can. Um, there's a quote section that appears afterwards, and you get to read a bunch of quotes from the dev team. One of the Ultima 8 quotes is, I thought when I started working here, I'd have to become a disciplined programmer. Obviously, I was wrong. And that's from Donovan Keithley after he saw the Strike Commander code. So the code in this must suck. <laughs> yeah. And I have no doubt, like it came on 14 discs. Like it was the largest number of discs I remember at the time. I had games that were five or six, but this thing was immense. It was enormous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're doing some bombing, huh? I'm going to do a bombing run here. This was before I even knew about the gun targeting. I, I bombed this free sites, man. Nice. Yeah. That, that gun target thing is cool. Yeah, it works better when it moves smoothly. And I think that's probably another thing that defects from the speed thing. Oh, I pulled the map up. Um, oh, yeah. I was going to yeah. talk about this. Go on, guess what the map key is. Like, you know now because you've read my notes. But Yeah. N for navigation. Not M for map, which M is not used. So M for map would have been fine. It's N for navigation. It what origin can we talk about your lettering schemes right you want to call us up and we'll just like have a little conversation we'll hash it out we'll there's it. there's yeah. you know we can work with you we'll get a dictionary we'll look up some words <laughs> yeah yeah you got like you know there's not that many letters in the alphabet surely you can do better than this <laughs> oh buddy oh you are blacking out yeah I know I said that it didn't happen all that often, but apparently I'm like making it happen a lot. Towards the end, I couldn't make it happen. I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah, and like the sun glare gets you, and you red yeah. out if you have uh, negative. You do or, negative G's. Yeah, it's the blood. negative G's to red out. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the blood pushes towards your brain. Right. Yeah. I think so. Now I don't remember. Now you've asked, and my brain's blanked. I know. I'm reading out. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, time compression thing is is kind of interesting too. Like you do get a sense that you're going across a big map. Granted, a lot of it is done with autopilot, but mm -hmm. it is kind of cool because you like have these mission stages and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You could have fly potential. there if you wanted to just point in a direction and go, but nothing's going to happen for <laughs> ten minutes. So. Right to look at this beautiful scenery. Yes. So go ahead and hit the auto map. You know. Yeah. The, autopilot or the time compression um, and you cannot tell how far above th this you can't like how high up am i like i know when i look at the side i know how high i up up i am but yeah but yeah it's not it's not great like it's just flat with some some mm -hmm. shading here and there to show off that they wrote a shader for this yeah. no yeah. it's too early it's too early to do this well 
but for the time when there were no other options, this was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I lusted after this game. I mean, this was, again, when did we say it? 93. Yep. For 93. Like, I put this in, like, a TIE Fighter side by side. You know what I mean? I feel like this should be happening in 98 when TIE Fighter came out. This mm-hmm. is happening in 93. That's impressive. That's genuinely, graphics wise, some of the game systems in here, the time compression, the autopilot, the talking with your uh, co-pilot to get them to target. And... Right. It's got, it's got like a weird level of polish, I think, for yeah. a flight sim. Uh, that's really neat, but man, just, and like, it could have been, I could have, I could have let the graphics go you know the low res graphics mm-hmm. the controls were good uh and you know you were able to shoot guys down like yeah. i probably if the controls are really good i probably would have gone back and tinkered with the emulator speed to try to get difficulty you know manageable mm-hmm. but yeah. when when it's just like jerky and not smooth and you don't feel like you're rolling like you know it, it's just like why am I going to do all this work and then yeah. be disappointed some more? I got to mission six or seven when you had to like r- bomb a bomb an enemy like missile site or something like that. And what would happen is, is as soon as I got in range, a missile would launch and I wouldn't have time to see it before right. I'd be down. Right. That was the problem with a lot of the training missions too. Like you, you're in and then there's a missile coming at you and and you don't really have time to react to, to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, I ended up not wanting to play it by the end of the month. I, I loathed putting time into this. I made things better. I, I put a lot of effort like in the middle of the month to really try and pull the fun out of this. And I would have had to put more effort into making it fun than any fun I possibly could have gotten out of it. Right. It's like, it's a losing gamble really. If you want to try and get the fun out of it yourself because you think we're wrong or you want to post something about it. uh, Recommendations are, uh, first off, turn on unlimited ammo. Definitely. That's going to make the gunfights. Maybe easy gun hits too. Yeah. Maybe easy gun hits. Follow, I didn't do follow that your end. pride. Yeah. Turn on easy gun hits. Uh, either find an old school joystick or make peace with that. Turn the speed way down. Um, make sure you hit F1 in this. I'm not doing this where you zoom in a little closer. That so helps can, hu- yeah. a huge amount. Um, yeah, and don't be afraid if there's a mission that's like how I got past mission six is I just ejected. Mm-hmm. And then I got yelled at for losing a plane. You're only allowed to lose so many. But it put me on to mission seven because yeah. this is not a game where like you can run out of money by spent shooting too many missiles or by doing wasting too much stuff and not, you know, and losing planes and stuff like that. But, uh, you're not going to affect the story by not completing a mission. It seems like, like I, I didn't, it didn't seem like me achieving the mission changed to the next mission. Yeah. So, and there's a storyline. Right, I was just gonna say it's it's a cool world uh, because it's like uh, you're like a jet mercenary. It's mm. cool. Like it had a lot, a lot yeah. of potential to be great. Yeah, well, the world's sort of a post economy crash uh, thing where jet fighter mercenary groups are being hired around to go fight people for oil. Basically, is what it seems like and. I mean, all right, I buy it. <laughs> <I'm> yeah. <in. laughs> yeah, there's a timeline in the manual. I, I meant to go back and check uh, to, to see how, how we were doing on that. Oh, we're way past it. Strike uh, Commander timeline. Here comes. Oh, the Strike Commander hands up. Oh, the hands, yeah. Yes. Classic. Uh, 
No, like is by the end of the nineties, this was happening. This is supposedly taking place in the early two thousands. Um, they didn't do a, you know, 20 XD six sort of thing. They, they made it close. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm okay with that. I liked it. Like I, I enjoy the timeline. I thought it was fun. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, I like the story. I, they make certain things personal. The characters are pretty one dimensional. They have one note, they come in, they hit it, they leave on that note. I mean, right. Yeah. You got your business guy and your yeah. tough You're spending old guy. too much money on planes. Patch that shit up and get it back up there. Dude, I can see the ground under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> You're flintstoning down the runway. Right. It's time to time to time to scrap this one. Um Yeah, and there's like the hard ass, you guys aren't hard enough for me as a mercenary. And then there's like the good old girl. Like I said, everything's a stereotype here. And I understand that we were doing very simple stories at this point in time. We were finally getting to stories in the early days. So this was a nice way to shorthand who people were. Sure. But it is worth mentioning that it's a thing that's happening because some people might take issue with it. Or if it, if you are very sensitive to that, you're going to run into it here. Yeah. Not that we recommend playing it. No, not that for reasons we don't recommend playing it. It actually didn't bother me too much in this game. And yeah, it wasn't gross. Like it was in, uh, it was really gross in Jagged Alliance. What I think's interesting is this game makes me want to play Jagged Alliance again. Now knowing that it's just sort of a cultural, that was the era, I can sort of stomach it a little bit more and just go, I'm not happy about it, but if I'm going to play story games from the early 90s, I better get over it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Like, we beat this thing up pretty good, I think. Yeah, we beat the hell out. Is there anything good you want to say about it? Uh, we did have a... <laughs> here, here, this is one of the more glowing statements from our notes. Voice acting is competent. Voice acting is competent. It's um, not bad. Yeah, very competent. Very competent. I I wasn't blown away by any of it, but I did realize I was like four or five missions in, and I hadn't made a comment about voice acting. And was like, that's a good sign. It yep. wasn't pulling me out of the game. Right. Um, it's unobtrusive. The CD Pong game during loading screens. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah. It used to be longer when I was on my 486. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> yeah, it used to be. They put it in there for a reason. Yeah, they did. Uh, when you exit, it says, thank you for playing. I miss games that thanked you for playing when you left. <laughs> yeah. I miss games that talk shit when you quit. Although yeah. we still do that sometimes. Some Doom do, was great but, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Doom and Wolfenstein and them were, were not afraid to yeah. feel bad about quitting games. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, what's next? What are we doing next? What are we doing next? Let me... Uh, well, technically, what we are doing next... What do you mean? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Technically, Technically, we're doing Lemmings next. Right. But I don't think that's what you're talking about. We are doing Lemmings in two weeks. We'll be yep, doing Lemmings. Just a short, short play of Lemmings. Short play of Lemmings. Uh, I've already started, even though I said we're only doing like one day on these games. I, I don't know. Lemmings is awesome. Lemmings is a great way to just sink a bunch of time into something. Mm-hmm. We'll talk more in depth about that later. What we are doing is Neuromancer. Very cool. Interplay. Uh, Interplay was the shit for this kind of game. Interplay used to do used to take risks. Mm-hmm. That is one of the things I've always loved about Interplay is every one of their games I felt was taking some sort of risk, trying something new, pushing a bound in a new way. And Neuromancer is oh I know it I I got somebody I need to recommend this game to. Um, this Neuromancer is sort of I'd say almost LucasArtsy. Hmm, okay. Uh, LucasArtsy Sierra-y in like that runaround adventure style um, with a really interesting hacking component. And cool. uh, it is not a direct adaptation of the book, but sort of a side adaptation of the book. 
sort of in the same way. Um, you have a lot to say about that book, but I'll I'll save it. We'll wait for the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did you play Out of This World? That was Interplay. I loved Out of This World. That was so good. The way it moved was amazing. Yeah, we have that on our request list. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'll shut up. Yeah. I'll shut up. And we'll just that's, take that's it as it comes. Someday coming. Yeah, we got we got a. First off, let me you know thank you for watching and making it this far. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we absolutely crap on Strike Commander for 40 minutes. Um, we will once again put a link in the comments that lets you make and suggest your own games. We hope you'll play Neuromancer this month with us so that come when we post about it, you can talk about it in those comments because we, we have a nice little community started here and I unbelievably still love our YouTube comments. Yeah, um, we have great, great people who who comment on stuff that's really rare and special yeah and surprising um mm -hmm. so but we are paying attention to all your stuff i will say our our wish list and this is part of why we're kind of switching up to two games a month here to just try and get through it before we add anything else like we're taking your reviews uh, requests first ish most of the time uh at least more than half because we got 10 years worth of backlog. <laughs> we yeah. could do this once a month for 10 years and just get through the games that we came up. We want to do off the top of our head. Um, so, you know, thank you for watching. Keep suggesting stuff. Cause that's going to help move the interested stuff to the front of the list. Mm -hmm. Comment, add, uh, you know, your own stuff, participate, love love hearing from you guys love seeing you guys post stuff or talk about it even if it's drifts off topic that's still great um, yeah yeah we're definitely not sticklers for staying on topic <laughs> no we're not <laughs> we're gonna stay professional we're going to stay on topic is never something we've ever meant no. um no we this is for fun this should be for fun and we want you to have fun with us so anything else we need to say about any of this before i Face no. out here. No, I'm, I'm happy to be kind of done with this game. To I'm be happy to be done with it too. I'm looking forward to Neuromancer. I'm looking forward to Lemmings in two weeks. And I guess we'll talk to everybody later. Thank Bye. you.